not accept this shit. No, I want my woman back. We live in a life of crime, lies, deceit, this Lord, fake niggas fucked up the streets with all this poison. Anything pop off, motherfuckers recording it. Broke bitches choice. Damn, my mama warned me. Damn, I should've listened. O S A V I E R D I A Z. Okay, Mr. Diaz, how how old are you? Twenty one, sir. Okay. And do you know Elijah O. Bishop? Yes, sir. How long have you known him? For about four years. Four years? Yes, so sir. Since you were 17 years old? Yes, sir. Okay. How did you meet him? Well, um, it was a certain phase in my life where I was going through a lot and I was seeking answers. I was seeking answers to the universe. So um, I came across him on the internet. When I came across this information on the internet, it was a lot of information. It was, but it was also a lot of hate. A lot of negativity from online critics, popular online critics. One of them being Chantel Coleman, popular online critics. One of them being Chantel Coleman, Chantel Coleman, um, who's actually here today, known as the T. She's one of Mr. Bishop's popular online critics. Okay. Who's actually being. Um, All right, oh, yeah, we're getting. Response. It's not responsive. Just answer the question, please. Well, yes. Well, hold, hold on, hold on. If he needs more information, he's going to ask you a question. So the question was when you met him or how you met him? It was. Okay. You answered that. Okay. So I met him through me going through a lot in my life. Okay. And um, I was seeking answers to guys through the internet. Okay. And so you were trying to add that there was uh, some negativity online. Is that yes, correct? Uh, who was a negative critic you saw online? Well, there's actually a lot of them in Saturday's courtroom today. Well, the main one that has been emailing the detectives to. All right. Uh, stop. All right. The okay. main one oh, stop. Hold on. Stop. Okay, let me rephrase the question. Um, can, can you guys approach for a sec? Sure, Judge. Um, when did you physically meet him? March 29th, 2021. March 29th, 2021. And yes, where, sir. where did you meet him at? Puerto Rico. Okay. And how did you get there? Um, I caught a flight. Okay. Where did you come? Where were you coming from? Chicago. Okay. Were you a student in school or what were you doing there? Um, well, during that exact time, it was, I think, COVID was going on. So all the schools were shut down. Okay. All right. And how did you fund the flight from Chicago to Puerto Rico? Well, um, I had a job that was I, I, the job closed down too, so they had to send me a check, okay. two thousand dollars check. Okay. And then I just used that check to pay for the flight. Okay. And so when you got to Puerto Rico, what was the living arrangements there? The living the living arrangements were actually very beautiful. Um, the men we were just together. We were just together, united. Um, Mr. Bishop, he actually went in his own space. He actually ended up leaving to Atlanta in his own space while we were actually alone, isolated, not isolated, but we were alone and said, holding down the hub by ourselves, we were actually alone. But he just asked you about the living arrangement, so just answer the question, please. Yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah, it was really beautiful. It was really beautiful. Anybody, hold up, if there are any comments, you're going to be kicked out of the courtroom. And Judge, I, I just, I'm, I'm going to try that, but I want him to have an opportunity to explain it. He, he certainly can, but he has to answer the question. If it warrants explanation, that's fine. But I, we're not going to go off on tangents that are not relevant. Right. I think, I think he's determined that it, it does warrant explanation. So, um, okay. you, you, you met Mr. Bishop, left, and went back to Atlanta. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. uh, we were at the house. Okay. And how long were you in Puerto Rico for? Seven times. How long were you in Puerto Rico for? Um, for about six months. Okay. Do you? How many people were there with you? About um, probably like thirty. It was probably um 
Seven men. Seven men. Okay. Yes. Were there any women there? Um, the ones that um had wives, the men that had wives, they were there too. Okay. Also, Mr. Bishop's wives were also there. Okay. So there were women there as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. But um, he except for his main wives, they went to Atlanta with him. Okay. Do you know who his main wives that went to Atlanta with him were? Um, the main wives will be Malia, um, and Afro, okay. and Aya, that went home. Okay. The rest of the women stayed there? Yes. Okay. All right. And they stayed there because they were not a main wife uh, or they were in a relationship with another guy? Well, the thing about the whole, the whole tribe is we're spiritualists. We're spiritual teachers. We're spiritual rules. So we teach spirituality. So people come and join on a spiritual journey. Nobody is being recruited. Nobody is being persuaded to join. Okay. Like for instance, for instance. Sustain, sustain okay. the objection. Okay. So um, let me re, re ask the question. Um, three women went to Atlanta with him. So that's not right. So that's not three. His wives went to Atlanta with him. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now you were asked, you were mentioning that you don't recruit and things like that. People were just showing up. Yes. Okay. All right. So after you were in Puerto Rico for six months, where did you go after that? After Puerto Rico, we went to Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Yes, sir. And so from the time that you got to Atlanta, did you remain in Atlanta or did you go somewhere else? Um, after Atlanta, uh, after Atlanta, we went to Philadelphia. Okay. And when you say we, who was we? Um, the man we went to Philadelphia to network. Um, I did a few music, uh, music, music shows. Okay. Uh, really to network. Okay. All right, and you you did some music shows. What kind of music do you do? Um, it was a music video I did on um YouTube for music. I did a video. It was a open mic, like okay. some type of open mic night. Okay. And was Carbonation was were there music production happening within Carbonation as well? So one time within the group was there was there music production being happening as well? Yes, sir. It was a lot of production. Okay. All right. Um, were there albums that were created or produced? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, were they placed on Spotify and other places? On on all streaming platforms. Okay. All streaming platforms. YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, really everywhere. Okay. All right. So. During the time that you were in uh, March 20th, 2021, did you know Velvet Marquez? No, sir. Okay. Did you know Brianna Jacobs? No, sir. All right. And Kendra Carter, did you know her? Yes, sir. You knew Kendra Carter? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you remember what name Kendra Carter went by? Uh, Mama Sheba. Mama Sheba. Mama Sheba? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you know Janae Newell? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you know what name she went by? Materi. Materi? Yes, sir. Okay. During the time that you were there, um, how often would you see uh, Kendra Carter? Kendra Carter, um, well, she was actually Aaron Dixon's wife. Okay. She was in there, Aaron Dixon's wife, so it was, it was quite often I was seeing her. Okay. Aaron Dixon was another member of the group? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so when she was around, was she staying around Aaron Dixon? For the most part, yes, sir. Okay. And Janae knew how often did you see her? Well, when she had got to Puerto Rico, she had came to Puerto Rico, and she wasn't there for long. She had, she ended up wanting to leave again. Okay. So when she left, she ended up going back to um, Atlanta. Okay. So I didn't really see her. I seen her more when we was in Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In March of 2022, were you at the house in Atlanta? Yes, sir. March 24th to be exact? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what was the living arrangements in the house? How did people stay? How did they sleep? Well, we ended up like, um, we ended up dividing ourselves into the living room, the um, dining room. Um, Mr. Bishop had his headquarters. It was also um, two other rooms that were open and available. Okay. Um, the middle room was it turned it ended up being turned into like a studio slash production room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And a typical day, how much production was done on a typical day? It was a lot of production. It was a lot of production. Like um, it was music being done. It was um, videos being edited. 
Um, it was a lot of acting that was being done. A lot of it was a lot of production. Okay, and the acting would entail um, was it dramatic acting, comedy? What kind of acting? It was really all type of acting. It was like entertainment. It was really all for entertainment purposes. Okay. We decided that um, right now humanity is in a very special time right now, and it, we come with a very important message that, we, that needs to be delivered to humanity. So us realizing that humanity is being distracted through entertainment and drama, we chose to meet humanity where they are and give them drama and entertainment. Okay. So collectively, I was actually there when we came to the collective agreement to do this, okay. to, to do certain performances and say certain things to deliver the message within that performance, okay. spiritual and probably spiritual. And was, that, was the purpose of that to get people to some shock and awe so they would pay attention to what you were saying? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So uh, March 24th, 2022, uh, was there anything, um, was there a party going on in the house or anybody over that day that you can call? Um, I think we were having an interview, a sign letter interview. I'm not sure, but um, the most that I can remember that day is cleaning up. We were cleaning up. I was cleaning up. I was having cleaning up the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up, we ended up feeling the energy inside of the house as if it was a meeting going on. So as I dis- as we dismissed the kitchen, that's when we attended the meeting, and then the conclusion was already we already kept up conclusion that she was ready to depart from the group. Okay, so Miss, when you say she was that, just- yes, sir. Okay. Um, in the in the meeting, uh, what happened after the meeting? How did you know she was getting ready to leave the group? Well, uh, it was it was it was discussed, and it was said that she was ready to leave and uh, to make arrangements for her Uber to pull up. So after that was discussed, I was asked to get her belongings from the set in the, in the back. Okay. So I went to the back and I got her belongings, I got her paintings, I got her suitcases, and I organized them. I helped organize them right there by the door. So it's week. Okay. Uh, where was she while you were doing all that? What was this new one you know? Um, I didn't. I, I, I don't. Know, I didn't really see her. Okay. I think she was right. I think I, she was in the living room. Yeah, okay. she was in the living room. As a matter of fact, she was standing right there. Okay. And where was Mr. Bishop? Did you see him? Um, I did not see him. Okay. So when you came back in, were her bags, did you give them to her or you put them by the door? Um, we placed, she was standing right there by the door, so I remember coming in, placing them right there by the door, and she had certain paintings that I actually liked. Like, a, she had a feral painting, and I, I remember asking her about the feral painting, and she said she wants to keep it. Okay. So I'm okay, so I remember placing them right there by the door. Okay. You wanted to keep the feral painting for herself? Yes, I like it. Okay. Yeah. But she didn't let you? Yeah, she was like, oh, she wanted this, I'm okay. okay. That's right. All right, so after you did that, did you continue to stay there with her, or what did you do next? Um, After I helped organize her bags, I just went about my business and waited until she left. Until she left. And once the Uber pulled up, she walked out the house. I thought that's when I went about my day. She just no longer existed from my point of view. Like, okay, now she's going into the world, she's leaving. Okay. And that's what it was. Did you see her come back in the house? I did not see her come back in the house, but I know she did. And when she came back in, Jackson, it, it was that. Hold on. Well, he, can, you, can you state how you knew she did? Because, because the Uber, when she had walked out to the Uber, she had ended up turning around. And then I was told that she came back. No, you can't talk yeah. about what someone else told you. Okay. You can't base your knowledge well, on that. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You cannot talk about what someone else told you. You can talk about what you saw okay. and what you observed, but that's it. Okay. So what I observed is I observed that the Uber was no longer there okay. and her bags were still outside. Okay. So I went outside and grabbed her bags because we're not going to leave them out there. And she has a history of coming and leaving and coming and leaving okay. several times throughout the years. Okay. All right, and so you brought her bags back inside. Yes, sir. But you didn't see her yourself. No, sir. Okay. You didn't see her go back upstairs or anything like that. No, sir. Okay. Um, and so, what did you do with her bags? We just organized them right there. I left them right there when we brought them back inside. We left them right there by the um, staircase. Okay. Because I didn't know she was going to leave again because she has the history of leaving and coming back, like I said before. Yes, sir. Um, had you ever witnessed any acts of violence between Mr. Bishop uh, and women in the group? No, sir. Have you ever seen him punch or hit or kick somebody? No, sir. Uh, how about uh, surround them and body slam them or anything like that? No, sir. Had you ever seen uh, him?
commit any physical acts of violence against uh, Ms. Poole. No, sir. Had you ever seen her with any uh, bruises or anything like that that Mr. Bishop would have uh, placed on her? No, sir. Um, what about women? Did, did you see or hear Mr. Bishop direct women uh, to hit other women on his behalf? Not that I see, sir. Okay. All right. Um, during the time that uh, March 24, 2022, were there... Um, there was a mixture of men and women standing there? Yes, sir. Okay. But you were for sure there that day? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you hear any um, scuffling upstairs or any fighting or anything that sounded like violence upstairs in the house? No, sir. It was actually very, like, it was peaceful. The music, you know, we went back to cleaning. We went back to cleaning. It was just a peaceful night. Everybody went about their business about the day. Okay. And this is why I feel as if Mr. Bishop. All right, no, 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 no. Your feelings aren't relevant. This is why. I, this is why I know. Stop. Stop. See, you can't convert it to I know and I feel. The judgment mm -hmm. is not going to allow you to say that. Okay. So, um. Okay. March twenty fourth, two thousand twenty two. April seventh, two thousand twenty two. Were you interviewed by police? No, I was not asked no questions, and I was asked no questions. Okay. Did police come and search the house? They did. Okay. Who else was there during the search of the house that you can recall? Was it a lot of people? As far as the police? No, not the police. What? Who was staying in the house when they came to search the house? Do you remember? Um, it was probably about, what was it, like 15? Maybe. Okay. And then 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, around, around that range. Okay. All right. Do you know who the police questioned there? No. Okay. But they didn't question you. No, I was not questioned. Okay. And this is why I have reasons to no, believe. No, 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 no so there were 12 to 15 people there. Were the devices that were there, um, were they devices that were um, used for production, the phones and cameras and things like that? Yes, sir. We okay. actually had cameras set up around the house. We were, all, we were working on a documentary okay. for production purposes. So there was cameras set up. Okay. Still being clicking. Okay. All right. Want to run back over something, then we'll sit down. You said you uh, first came across them. You're 21 now. You were 17 when you first came across them, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and you were living in Chicago. Yes, sir. Okay, you were what? What year were you in high school? Had you dropped out of high school, or were you in high school? Um, currently during that time of period, I was not in high school. I was in alternative uh, school, mm -hmm. and that's when I started tapping into the realization that okay, nature, <laughs> nature. Okay, and were your parents in Chicago? Yes, sir. Okay, did you continue to communicate with your parents? Yes, sir. Okay. Did your parents know where you were? They actually did. Okay. Uh, how frequently do you think you talked to your parents during that time frame? Um, when I was in Puerto Rico. Or, yes, sir. Well, when I was in Puerto Rico, I was actually FaceTiming my parents. I was face. I was FaceTiming them, so yeah, everything's okay. I'm here. I'm protected. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And where 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 is the group? Uh, did most people have cell phones in Puerto Rico? Yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody has cell phones. Okay. Were they allowed to use them? Of course. Okay. And do you recall if any other parents came to Puerto Rico or any other family members while you were there? Puerto Rico. If you can recall. No, not that I can not that I can recall while I was there. Okay. And during the time that you were in Atlanta, in Atlanta did did everybody have cell phones? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh and were people allowed to use them? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. The state's going to have a few questions for you, okay? Yes, sir. And just remember to be responsible to what they're asking you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Across. All right. Mr. Diaz, just a few questions for you. Um, 
You just said that your family knew where you were. So was I. You just testified that when you were with Mr. Bishop, your family knew where you were. Yes, ma'am. That's not true, is it? It is true. Okay. There was an occasion when the police came to the house because you had not contacted your mom in several months and she was concerned about you, right? The police had popped up, but they popped up because it's a lot of online hates. Okay. It's a lot of online critics online that make us look bad. So her being a mother, caring, of course, but she sees these online critics making us look bad, she's going to be in worry of her son. So she reported that to the police. It's a lot of videos that's making us look bad, so she's worried. But I told her where we were. That's okay. where I was. Here's my question. She was concerned because you had not contacted her in four months. Yes? That's not true, though, okay. because I was in contact with her. I right. actually called her and FaceTimed her. Okay, and you just testified on direct that you had never seen Mr. Bishop be violent with anyone in the group. That's a fact. And that's not true, is it? That is true. There's a video where Mr. Bishop is there with you and Lloyd, right? Right. And he slaps Lloyd in the face. And you were present on that video, weren't you? I was present on that video, but I have already stated on the record that a lot of things that we had did were for production purposes. It was called spiritual improv. Like I said, we have come with a very important message to proclaim the kingdom. Okay, all right, you're getting far off the, resp the response yeah, now. So, so, hold on, hold on. I would ask that he be allowed to answer the question. He, he, she asked him a question, he should be able to And he, is, he has a right to explain his answer, but he doesn't have a, a right to go on and on and on about things that are not relevant. But I, I would argue that it is relevant. He's explaining why the, the, the slap that she's alleging that was violent. He should be able to explain okay. why it happened. All right. Overrule the objection. Okay. Mr. Diaz, here's my question. Mm -hmm. All right. On direct, you said you have never seen Mr. Bishop be violent with anyone in the group, right? Right. That is a lie. That is just not true, is it? That is true. Okay. You've seen him be violent with people in the group, right? For production. It's not, but it wasn't violence. It was out of a joke. But I was happened. there. I was there collectively when we came to the agreement. We came to the collective agreement. We were actually in the living room watching the TV show called Living Colors with Jimmy with Jim Carrey and Jimmy Fox. We were in the living room collectively. I was there that night. And we came to the collective agreement that we need to do certain things and say certain things, performances to slip in the message to humanity, give humanity entertainment, give humanity drama, and meet them where they are, so we can slip the message, the divine message that we have for them inside that performance. So any physical activity that is being presented online, we have already stated, and we it's actually a live video on the internet where the telephone will be passed around. Like for me, instance, for me, instance, the phone will come to me and I'll be like, "Pop." Judge, 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 and of, of, of being involved in violence, and he's given an example. All right, of over, overrule the objection. He's had ample opportunity. I, I didn't make an objection, Judge. I'm, I'm, you, I'm, I'm asking. I'm overruling you, whatever it is you're saying. <laughs> Sorry. I uh, know. You, they objected. You responded. So I am uh, sustaining. I'm overruling. I don't believe there was an objection. Y'all have gotten me so confused now. Well, I just asked that you find the answer is non-responsive. Non-responsive, thank you. All right, Mr. Diaz, I'm, I'm gonna ask a really, really specific question. It's a yes or no question, all right? He does have a right to explain his answer, but you need to answer the question okay. first. There is a video on YouTube with you, Mr. Bishop, and Loyal. Yes? Yes. In that video, you are all three facing the camera. Yes? Yes. In that video, Mr. Bishop slaps Loyal in the face. Yes? I don't know. Okay. All right. It's called spiritual improv. Wonderful. All right. So you joined when you were 17 years old, pretty young. Right. And you said that you were going through some things. Yes. And so you looked at Mr. Bishop as God. Yes. You still think he's God. Yes. But I also know that I am God too. And you are God too. And everybody in this courtroom is God. God is energy molecules, when we observe reality, if I was to take a microscope and zoom into the essence of who you truly are, it's just a whole bunch of energy vibrating. So I understand that Mr. Bishop is God, and I am God, and you are God, and everything is God, and we are all God. Okay. And 
With Mr. Bishop, you you look to him for your spiritual guidance. Yes. And y'all talk pretty regularly. Since when? Since this case has been going on, you guys still talk, right? Um, it's kind of not as much as we used to because it's been a lot of not 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 as much. Um, but you have talked to him since this trial started, right? Since the trial started, not really. Not really. Not yes or no. Have you talked to him since the trial started last week? Since the trial started last week? Um yes. Okay. And he kind of gives you an update about what's going on in court, right? Not really. It's just the more so it's like Mr. Bishop, I look to Mr. Bishop as a mentor, as a tutor, as my tutor, as a teacher. So since we're going through a it's trials and tribulations that we are going through right now. So as like a disciplinary and a father figure, as that's how I look like a father figure. He keeps his students, makes sure he motivates his students, he inspires his students, he inspires me, he motivates me to keep going, to stay strong. And when he motivates you, he motivates you to come in here and, and tell him what he said, right? No, he just motivates me to speak the truth. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about when you joined the group. There were some rules, right? Yes. Now, you said you had a $2,000 check you got from your job, uh, and that helped fund your fare to Puerto Rico? Yes, ma'am. And then the rest of that money you gave it to Mr. Bishop when he got here? Yes, ma'am. It was just in the pot. I just gave it to the pot. I, it was a donation from my heart. Okay. Uh, did you have any belongings that you had to sell before you got here or to the group? Did I what? Did you have any belongings that you had to sell before you got to the group? Oh, um, no. Um, and any credit cards or anything like that? No, I have no credit cards. And as far as sleeping, if Mr. Bishop was up talking and teaching or having your meetings, y'all couldn't go to sleep until he said y'all could, right? I mean, it's not that we couldn't go to sleep until he said that we could. It's just if we're in a classroom and the teacher is teaching, it's like, why would you want to miss out on a lesson that the teacher is teaching? Why, why, why would you be here? Why are you here if you're going to miss out on a lesson? If we're in school, and you're in class, and the teacher is teaching, and you fall asleep during class, is the teacher going to tell you, hold on, pay attention to the message? Okay. And as far as eating, y'all couldn't eat until he ate? Um, that's not really true, because I've, I've witnessed multiple times uh, Mr. Bishop not eat. He's actually, I've witnessed multiple times Mr. Bishop fast for seven days, while the rest of the members inside of the tribe eat as much as they want to eat. So that really isn't true. Okay. Um, when y'all are out and Puerto Rico or wherever you guys were, um, y'all couldn't use the bathroom inside, could you? That's not true because we actually had an inside bathroom that was connected to a septic tank. Okay. There so was not that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So it's not that we couldn't use the bathroom inside. It's just we understand what the earth is and we care for the earth and we understand that when you flush that toilet, it goes through a plumbing system to harm the waters of the earth, which is causing the earth to be harmed and destroyed, and that's what natural disaster. So us being naturalists and spiritual gurus, we like to live in tune with the earth and protect the earth. And and a part of being in tune with the earth <clears throat> was pooping in a hole outside, right? It's oh, uh, it's it's. I know it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy, but poop is not what you think it is. It's not what you think it is. It's actually soil. When you eat tox a lot of toxins, you fill your body with these toxins and these parasites, and then that's when the poop turns into something parasitic. But it's actually so soil and dirt that's supposed to be given back to the earth. Okay. But when you when we were inside the bathroom, it was connected to a septic tank. So if you flush the toilet, it's gonna get pushed through a septic tank and gets into the earth. So we were never not allowed to use the restroom inside. Okay. And so when you you released your soil into a hole in the ground, you were allotted six squares of toilet paper, right? Mm -hmm. Six squares of toilet paper. That's what y'all got to use when you had to use the bathroom, right? No. No. Okay. I don't know where you got that from. All right. So, Mr. Bishop, um, he defined the roles between the men and the women, right? Define the rules as far as what? Women being less than men. Women being less than men. It's not that women. Mr. Bishop never stated that. Mr. Bishop actually stated that women were actually equal in value. We were all not equal in function. And you can clearly see that when we look at how our bodies are structured. We are all equal. We are all one. We just have different purposes. We have different genomes. We have different activated genes that make us who we are, that make us different from each other. All right. And he told you all that if you left the cult, that outside would be hell. He never, no, not really. It's, um, it's not a cult. It's not a cult. It's a tribe. For instance, me, 
I joined the jo I, I joined the tribe on my own free will, on my own accord. I'm the one that texted Mr. Bishop saying that I like what he's doing and it's a lot of sense. I can feel that I see the movement and I want to join and be a part of the movement. You understand? So me doing that, um, what was the primary question? Yeah. The question was, he told you that when people left the group, that outside was hell. Oh no, 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 no. Actually, this whole realm, hell is a mentality, it's a state of mind. So when you are at discontent with who you are, when you are miserable within yourself, when you are depressed within yourself, this is when you are in hell. It's all a state of mind, it's all mental. It's the first correct law of principle, the law of mentalism. So hell was like a moment in a state of mind. You could just because you're with them, don't mean that you can actually be in a heavenly state. You could still you could be anywhere you want to be and be in a state of hell because you're depressed within yourself, because you are going through a lot of situations that you don't have proper answers to. So it is not that when you believe you go to hell, it's just that with us we hold a very healthy perspective. So you trying to turn your back and denounce us and join the online critics as you believe them into the your lower self because now you're going against what we stand on, which is truth, morals and principles. Okay, just a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about social media. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bishop, back in March 2022, had a Twitter page. Yes? Yes. And nothing got posted to that Twitter page without his permission. Um, I'm not really sure about how he ran social media. I wasn't really running the social media. I was more so doing like the editing videos, working on studio. So I'm not really sure how he ran the social media. And and you talked about Mr. Bishop being your God, your Lord, your Savior, all that, right? The Messiah, yes. The Messiah. So is the Messiah. The Messiah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you can't say no to the Messiah, can you? Um, it's not that you can't say no. Mr. Bishop never said he Mr. Bishop puts everybody to be real and be themselves. That's actually one of the MODs, which is morals of desires. What was the principle that he teaches? Transparency, which is you being your authentic self, being you. So whenever somebody was holding back, he will feel it. Whenever, like, he will push people to speak their truth and be real. So he never said, don't say no. He never said that. And if someone said no, there would be consequences, right? Not really. If someone said no, it is to be like, okay, you elaborate on what's with, elaborate on why you're saying no. That's all. There's our ideas out there. All right. Are you direct? I have no further questions. Thank you. May he be excused. Yes, if you remain for a He may. Also, Mr. Bishop is here. Hey, sorry. No. What did she, she just say? No. Oh. You Pasquale. know what? He just lost his right to stay in the courtroom, deputies. He, he can be That's escorted out. Melissa Prosecution. All right. He's, he is no longer welcome in the courtroom. Call your next. Who's your next witness, Mr. Uh, Rupert? Judge, I'm not sure if the court wants to be the same one. Uh, we're going to continue on. I would like to get as much evidence right, as possible. Okay. Hey, yo, if you enjoy this content, please support the channel Wack. And oh yeah, don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms, especially Rumble, because I can put content on there that I can't put on YouTube. So please support that. I will I will put my beacon link in the in the description box. That way you can follow me on all social media, Discord, Facebook, Web, Twitter, wherever. You can follow me wherever. Please support the movement. CV Killer Forever. Just wanted some attention and she got there because she's like, Ooh, girl, when she saw her, I can't do it quite as good as she did, but that's that's what she said. Um, and she told the bishop would never treat me like this when they were fighting over a cell phone charger. Uh, so Rick Ross was the expert, he's the guy who got up here, and I'm not trying to minimize a high school diploma because I told you I was born in Mississippi, I come from a father who was in the United States Army. My dad, he never had his. His, his high school diploma. He got his GED in the army. 
but he came from a family of people that were something maybe you guys have never heard called sharecroppers. My grandfather was a sharecropper. And so my dad didn't have an opportunity to go all the way through high school because he had to go work for his family. They had to pick cotton. That's what was something they did in Mississippi and raise crops. So to minimize Mr. Ross as an expert because he has a high school diploma and no further education, I'm not saying that he's not intelligent because my dad is the most intelligent person that I've known and he had no high school diploma, he got a GED. But Mr. Rick Ross is here to be an expert for you. And I know many of you guys are extremely right having high, high degrees and ex a very extensive jobs. Think about what power he had as an expert, what he actually told you that was irrelevant. Because if they didn't make it about a cult, why was he even up there? Wheel of power, domestic violence. Again, this case is not about domestic violence. And that she was forced to have sex because she was afraid of physical abuse. Again, there's been no evidence of physical abuse. Witness in peace, the judge will explain what that means. But has given multiple statements that's called witness impeached uh, and ask the state to play those statements for you see what she re recalls all right what's most valuable to you your family your home your health money when you consider this case the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Elijah Bishop is guilty in this case well for this case what's most important to me is Elijah Bishop he is the most important thing to me because he is my responsibility in this case. My job is to zealously defend him. You think of the judge with two arms, the defendant's job is to zealously defend. That's my job. I'm, I'm an officer of the court. So Judge Hydrick, wonderful and brilliant judge. I'm a right arm or a left arm, whichever one she wants me to be. And these two lawyers, they're the other side. Their job is to seek justice. My job is to zealously defend. So if I've said something during the trial that you don't like, I apologize, I'm doing my job. That's my obligation to my client. Okay? So don't hold it against my client if I, I argue too vehemently with a witness or you didn't like something I said. Please consider the case based on the evidence, not how you feel about me or whomever. But in this case, would you tie your health, your money, your family, your children, whatever it is most important to you, will you tie it to the evidence in this case? I would. Mr. Bishop is your most valuable asset in this case. What you're not to decide this case on is sympathy for sympathy for Elijah o. Bishop it has nothing to do with sympathy and not anything about Elijah o. Bishop and his teachings. OK, not about Elijah o. Bishop's teachings. The state will tell you that it's not about that, even though that seems so intertwined in this case, we can't get away from it. Uh, this is what you are to consider it on. And just to look at a couple of them, conflicts in the testimonial evidence, missing or questionable evidence. Use your common sense and reasoning. Medical reports we don't have. There's no science in this case. Use the testimonial evidence that you have. Things upon it, I'm almost done. If the defendant was such a physical threat, what evidence of there does that exist? Um, and if there were allegations by of him being physically violent, there would have been some evidence before now. Um, Wade testified that she posted a video with her and the others and for sex education. That's for you to consider. Did she testify that Bishop had her to do this? No, she didn't. Uh, and if the state had video of Mr. Bishop somehow making these witnesses testify in some way as they tried to solicit from them, they would have played there for you. They don't have that. March 24, 2022 is really what this case is about. And I know I say I'm almost done a lot. I really am almost done. This text message, I think, is a really telling text message. This is the one that it says, if, you know, why ask them for a ride? May, they, they're not going to take me. We know there were two cars there, but they, who is they? When I asked her who was they, she said, I need to go use the bathroom. Why does she need to go use the bathroom? Maybe she needs to come up with an answer for what that they pronoun meant for her. I don't know. But I couldn't imagine that I'm in a house where I've been a victim of physical abuse, violent abuse for so long. And the person that can get me out of here. And I asked the people who are the same folks I'm so afraid of. Can you please go drop me off? That's not that doesn't make any sense. Look at the text messages. Now. In Walmart, I worked in Walmart for a while. Really cool place. Home Depot, too. There's a big customer service place at the front. And if you go to Walmart and you buy a hammer you don't like, you buy some shoes you don't like, you buy some bacon you don't like, 
you can always take it back. Okay? Because there's somebody there that will take back things that you don't you don't want. Okay? We don't have anybody to correct if you make a mistake in this case. That's why I'm asking you when you deliberate that you deliberate in a way that you consider each other's position, but you deliberate in this case seriously. Because every night, tomorrow night, Friday night, Dateline comes on, 2020 comes on on Sunday, there's always a person who's been there that this criminal case that they had, they've been in jail for 20 years, and all of a sudden they realize, hmm, maybe that person lied, or maybe there's some DNA that exists, or maybe something else, okay? There is nobody that's going to come back and fix this if you are wrong. This is not Walmart. That's why you guys have the most important role in the courtroom. More important than Judge Hodger, more important than anyone else. Please do not let the fact that there's a camera here, that there's some outside interest in this case, influence what you do. Because in this world, it is so easy so often that we go and do what everybody else says to do. We don't stand up as an individual and say, hey, I don't disagree. I don't agree with you. Everybody else, because if everybody else says Mr. Bishop is a cult, if everybody else says he's a wacko, he must be crazy. So as a result, we must find him guilty. Society wants us to find him guilty. We're just going to do their job for them. Please don't do that. He's already explained what rape means. That's what the judge is going to explain. Carnal knowledge, female, force went against the wheel. Against the wheel means without her consent. 2022 to 2024, she's given the exact same description every single time that they made love. There's two ends of a continuum. There is love making at one end of the continuum and way down on the other end of the world. And the Bible says it, it says as far as the east is from the west that our sins are forgiven is what the Bible says. And I would say that this is extremely far. That I, The east is from the west. I can't imagine how far that is. But Love making to rape, they're not on the same line, but she described love making from 2022 to 2024. It's not until she came here in court that she said that he raped. He did not rape her. He's not guilty of that. He did not falsely imprison her. I'm asking you to find him not guilty of that. He did not post revenge porn. I'm asking you to find him not guilty of that. I'm asking that his beliefs not be on trial. Um, I believe in a holy God. Mr. Bishop is not God. God created the heaven and the earth that we're here for right now. He ain't got nothing. Mr. Bishop has nothing to do with that. Now, their beliefs that we're all God, that's on our move. That's not what's on trial. What's on trial is whether on March 24, 2022, whether he raped this lady or not. And I'm asking you as you go in the back and as you consider each other, that you consider that. Now, you guys are probably, you're very bright people. I know you're tired of listening. I'm almost sitting down. Mr. Bishop's not over there. Why is he not over there? Well, two days ago, we came here and the court had tested positive for COVID. Mr. Bishop was concerned about his well being and about getting COVID. And so he elected to not be present here in court because he was concerned about getting COVID. We are all segments, different sections of the population. You guys are sitting here with this. Plexiglass in 20 years, I don't know if that stops you from getting COVID. I just know a few years ago, millions of people were dying as a result, and he is not here as a result of that. So I'm asking you not to hold that against him. I'm asking you to decide this case based on the evidence that you have before you in this case. Um, there, he, he said that she was bullied into sex, yet there's no evidence of that. That he was in a scenario where he intimidated her. She has never said a single word about being bullied into sex, about being intimidated into sex. There's been no witnesses that came forward and said that. Please, as you consider the evidence, please balance all those things. Um, I say this and I'm gonna go sit down. Um, as an attorney, it's extraordinarily difficult to get up and argue in front of people, especially me, I'm an introvert. If it wasn't for the fact of me being here in this courtroom, you would never see me because I'm the kind of person who goes into a room who doesn't want to do But I have to get up here and argue a case in front of people that I have no idea what you're thinking. I have no idea what you're feeling. But I owe an obligation to Elijah Bishop. I owe an obligation to the court to get up and argue a case. And it makes it really challenging to go sit down because I know once I sit down, I never get to say anything else to you. 
But I want to tell you on behalf of Mr. Bishop, on behalf of myself, I appreciate every bit of opportunity that is a practice in front of you here. I, I enjoy what I do as a practitioner, but I appreciate the opportunity that I've had to practice in front of you guys. I appreciate the consideration in the case. And I ask that when you go into that and that you consider this case, that you return a verdict of not guilty on behalf of each and every count. Be from Missouri, be from the show table. I'm I'm not a woman. I can't I don't know how it feels um, to be in a position where you would be great. I could never understand that. But what I do understand here is that you are given a responsibility in a role here in DeKalb County. And your role is to stand here as a citizen of DeKalb County and determine whether or not the state has proven this case beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt. Is there a reasonable doubt today in your mind that Mr. Griff, Mr. Elijah Bishop is not guilty of rape? Has the state proven that beyond a reasonable doubt? And that's when you go in the back and you decide who's going to be the four person, four woman, four man, whatever it may be, that you, whatever your position is, that you stick.